Hello, Taika. Hello, Daya. It is so lovely to meet you. Likewise. Both. Oh, first of all, I just want to say how much I loved the film. I thought it was incredibly funny and beautiful. And it was a story that I can't believe I had never heard before. It feels like you really unheard an important story with this. Um, no, take it. You can pretty much make whatever movie you want. <laughs> what was it about this story that made you think, yes, this is the next story I want to tell? I had just finished, I think just finished doing Thor and Jojo. And I'd been away from New Zealand for about six, seven years. And I watched the doc and just felt a real connection, obviously because it's the Pacific Island, um, Islands, but just felt homesick and I felt like it, it just drew me home. And I wanted to go home and be around, you know, around, around Pacific Islanders again and make something that was uplifting and made me happy and made me feel like I was at home. And, you know, and, and even though it's not, you know, it, budget isn't as big as like a lot of these other films it's something that just it it's my wheelhouse doing these you know, films and you know we shot in 25 days um you know very small crew which is how i did my first four films so it's like so that's my comfort zone so just going back to be able to do that with brown faces on screen and um and just yeah that that was my happy place sort of a reset button the reset you. but yeah and now i can be stressed out again Oh, good. Well, great. Glad we're back on that. <laughs> so, yeah, I totally agree. I feel like this is the perfect story for your specific lens. Um, Jaya, I'm curious for you. I can't even imagine what it must be like to see your own life play out on the screen in this kind of way. What was it like for you to kind of see, you know, uh, Kaimana and Michael retell your story? And if did you come to any new realizations about yourself watching it in this adaptation? Um, I saw a lot of myself in, in Kaimana's character. Um, not, not accurate to the timeline, but a lot of her experiences are so true, not only to me as a Samoan Fafafine and all the comfortabilities that we have in our region, but also um, the realities of trans folk that she faces in the movie are, are things that I've gone through myself and, and a lot of trans people around the, the world have gone through. So those things were, were um, important to, to me as a Fafafine and a trans woman, um, but also um, just letting people know about our culture and our lifestyle, our nature, the way we live and how carefree we are and, and yeah, how freeing we are in the Pacific. I love that. I, I felt like I did learn a lot watching your story play out. I, I mean, I think, I don't think people under, know much about the Fafafina culture, so getting to see that on screen was incredibly powerful and beautiful and um, hopefully Op heart opening for people who are watching it. It's also important that just to, you know, to tap on that is, is, um, is that we didn't make a big long scene of explaining everything. Uh -huh. Like it's like I think it's an audience's duty to like get the feel for what this is, but it's not like we don't want to be like, hey, here's a uh -huh. uh, yeah an informative film <laughs> about what Fafafine is. It's like you get uh, you understand what. You know, it's part of the culture and everything. Yeah. We just didn't want to, you know, tell a story that feels very, we feel very trendy right now to do, especially mm -hmm. in, in Hollywood. An American filmmaker's hands, I think, you know, you'd have this big speech about like it's okay to be mm. different mm -hmm. and like you know, and, yeah. and you know, really smash it over the head and like and so I, I, it's just important we do it in our way and also just to it, just to show that you know. Yeah, there's a this idea of acceptance has been around a long time in, in indigenous cultures and like you know Fafafina has been accepted and it's a sacred and an honored thing um, where the rest of the world is have struggling with the conversation at the moment and yeah. figuring out what to, you know how do we talk about this and like you know yeah. and, and trying to figure out like you know how to you know fascinated by what, what, what people want to do with their own bodies and you know where it's like you know mm -hmm. in the pacific it's like well that is your body we you know there's actually we need to eat so let's you know, you do what you want to do with your body let's go oh, now we're going to go get some food and we go, there's other things to worry about so i think yeah. that's an important message too i think so as well and i think that the film does a good job of kind of communicating that without being really didactic and i appreciate that and i think that's true of many elements of the film, right? You know, it's this funny, feel-good sports film based on a true story. Um, it also elevates these marginalized voices, but 
so I'm curious for you, because this movie is actually, there are so many layers to it. How do you find the balance between the serious and the silly? I have to put humor into my films as, you know, in some way, as um, something just to like, alleviate tension, but also to bring, um, to pull the audience in. So I think that's a great, you know, on Jojo I did it as well. It's like, you know, there are messages in my films, you know, which is like, and in this one it's like, you know, Stop trying to swim upstream and just go with the current, you know, you'll get, you know, because you're never going to get anywhere trying to like fight against, you know, life and control every aspect of it. It's okay just to let go and let life happen to you. And, um, you know, but I think that message in a super serious film is like not my style for, for a start. And also it's like not anything that personally I want to watch. You know, I like being drawn in There's with so humor and, and joy and lightness and then being hit over the head you know, with like a, a proper message. I love it. I love it. It helps bring down the defenses too, which I think is really important. So my last question is for you, Jaya. So you are not only an athlete, but an activist. And I'm curious for you, if you feel, if you feel think, like things have changed, if we're headed in the right direction um, in terms of uh, trans people in sports, like do you, since you've told your story, do you feel like there is, we're moving in, in a direction that you feel is positive? There has been some progress up until Trump became president and empowered a whole community of um, Trump, I call them Trump and Z's, um, but um, um, just the whole, the whole conservative movement it, I think in itself has made a lot of um, organizations like the IOC and the NCAA rethink what they, you know, their priorities are and their approach towards LGBTQI plus athletes. And so now we're starting to move back again and, and it feels like, you know, we take one step forward to take two back. But the fight continues and I will be here to support. I don't think you can watch this movie and watch your story and not have your heart soften. I just, I can't imagine it. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. This has been a dream. I love your hair. I can't wait for Yeah, me too. I love your hair too. I love both of your hair. <laughs> have a wonderful day. Thank Likewise. you. See ya.